Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. I'm going back in time to the 17th of June 1994 to tell you about the famous O.J. Simpson police chase. So football lovers around the world, you know, had sat down at that particular day watching a game, glued to the television screens um, when they, you know, the program was interrupted to show a live chase of a fleet of black and white police cars pursuing a white Ford Bronco uh, along interstate lines in Los Angeles, California. Uh, this was a very interesting um, situation back then in 1994 because we know the very popular legendary actor, footballer, O.J. Simpson. You know, he was loved by all because of, you know, the, the beautiful game that he played and his skills, you know, on the pitch. But you know, the police had found his, his ex-girlfriend, um, her name, or I beg your pardon, ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ronald Goldman. They had found their bodies outside their house a few days ago. Police had begun investigating the case. And, you know, by the 17th of June, 1994, the police had decided that O.J. Simpson was a lead suspect in that case. So they went to arrest him. And when they went to the house, what happened was O.J. Simpson and his friend called Al Collins. They snuck out through the back door, entered Al Collins' um, wise Ford Bronco and began to drive. Al Bronco simply put a call through to the police to say he is in the car and that O.J. Simpson had put a gun to his head and had ordered him to drive to his house. He didn't want to be arrested. He simply wanted to go home. They said he wanted to meet his mother at home as well. So basically the police was chasing him. It wasn't a very fast chase. It was a very, very slow chase. chase. I mean, you can see a line of police cars. You know, they were following him patiently behind. You know, that football game was interrupted. People just started to watch a live action movie police chasing that car, you know, and commentary saying, O.J. Simpson has a gun to his head, so don't do anything too drastic, let's just follow him. Then he pulled over to the house, and he was in the house for a while. He came out at about 9 p.m. that night. The police immediately arrested him. So at the end of the day, it was found that, you know, um, he, he wasn't guilty of that particular murder or those murders, but at the end of the day, he was found liable of the murders and he was asked to pay huge sums of money to the family of his ex-wife and his friend. And the court had ordered him to pay 33.5 million US dollars in damages to the family. That's because a jury had acquitted Simpson of the murder charges in October 1995, about that separate civil trial in 1997, you know, found him liable and asked him to pay money to the families. So this was what happened today in history, that famous O.J. Simpson police chase in real life. Live well, action. Live action. We know that many years later, of course, O.J. Simpson continued to fall, fall out with the law. He mm -hmm. was arrested. There was a time he broke into a hotel, stole his sports memorabilia. He said it was his. It was stolen from him at gunpoint, so he wanted to retrieve it. But the hotel called the police to say this guy had broken into our hotel to steal mm. this. You know, he was also, he has just done a lot. Mm. You know, he was in prison for a while, was released um, in October 2017. You know how, how they say it, um, it never rains, but it pours. <laughs> because when things happen, they just come in their numbers. But that was really something, and the number of people who actually uh, tuned in to watch that particular a incident lot. was massive. Also today in history, in 2017, uh, Bill Cosby uh, was in the news. Uh, at that particular time, there has been so much sexual allegations, uh, you know, and indecent behavior, you know, allegations. Um, against him and uh, it went to trial and at that particular time in 2017, the jurors just could not reach a verdict. The judge in the sexual assault trial of Bill Cosby declared a mistrial after jurors reported being hopelessly deadlocked after six days of deliberations, bringing an inconclusive end to this phase of one of the highest profile cases in recent history. Uh, District Attorney Kevin Steele of Montgomery County in Pennsylvania immediately vowed to put Cosby on trial again. The outcome denied a vindication to either the defendant or the dozens of women uh, who have accused Cosby of uh, one of the world's best known entertainers of assaulting them over a span of decades. The exhausted jurors deliberated for about 52 hours longer than the defense and prosecution had spent presenting their cases and as much as 12 hours per day.
but they could not reach a unanimous verdict on charges that in 2004, Cosby drugged and assaulted Andrea Constant in his home near her. Okay, uh, Cosby's wife then, Camille, released a scathing statement accusing the district attorney of being heinously and exploitatively ambitious, uh, uh, the judge of overtly and arrogantly collaborating with the district attorney and some news organizations of greedily selling sensationalism at the expense of a human life. Now, Judge O'Neill praised the jurors for their service and asked them not to discuss their deliberations. For 52 hours, they just could not reach a verdict because uh, they were, they said they were really exhausted. And uh, lots of women had come out at that particular time, Aneta, you know, all of them saying almost the same thing that at one point in time, over decades, that uh, Bill Cosby had dropped them and, um, you know, had some sort of indecent, uh, you know, behavior with him. Then. Yes, indeed. So despite the fact that this was a mistrial, mistrial mm. meaning that either there was an error in the proceedings yes, and they couldn't or, reach, or they couldn't uh, reach a verdict. verdict, you know, you just imagine coming together, you know, all the, the, the you know, the jury saying, did he actually do this? Did he not? They couldn't determine. They couldn't determine. And so, they could just put an, um, uh, maybe a guilty or an innocent man in prison. So they just have to declare a mistrial. Exactly. Of course, it went to trial again. So... That didn't, yes, it did go to trial again, mm. but that initial mistrial did not, you know, do any damage control At because Bill, Bill Cosby's name now is tarnished forever in history, mm. despite all the remarkable achievements he's had, the Bill Cosby show, he's mm. known as a comedian. How and what were taken away from him, you know, uh, lots of, uh, you know, uh, stuff that he's gotten over the years were just uh, stripped off him because uh, they felt they could not really be associated to someone uh, who has dented his image uh, specifically. Yes, and this sexual harassment thing is a very big issue in our society. It happens it here in Nigeria. In one of the newspapers we read this morning, also about Baba Ejisha, we mm -hmm. know he, he's, he's mm -hmm. a popular uh, Nigerian actor. Now, this sexual harassment case for a very young child now has, you know, tarnished his image in, in, in Nigeria. So, yes, we, we should all be careful. And, yeah, we should. Yes. And we should just try to respect keep the it dignity. all in yes, if we cannot the really... Of, of the people. Of people. When they yeah. say no... Respect no means no. no. Exactly. Even if they said yes and they said no later, it is a no. It is a no. Yeah. All right, that's it on Today in History. I went back to the year 1994 to tell you about the famous O.J. Simpson police chase. And of course, in 2017, where the jurors uh, could not uh, reach a verdict, the Bill Cosby's uh, trial, and of course, they declared it a mistrial. Yes, let's take a break here and, and uh, go straight into our first conversation about politics to stay with us on The Breakfast. <laughs> 